What is happening everybody, it's your boy Jim and James 59 and in this video I'll be talking about my top 5 balance changes that I think we should see in the game and plus I will have two honorable mentions that are basically bonus balance changes. I'll get into that in just a sec. The reason I'm doing this video is because we've seen a lot of balance changes over the last several months and that's been I think a pretty good thing for the game overall. That being said I still think there are some changes we could see that would continue to to take on and continue this trend of improving the game and I do think that we are going to see some of these later on so definitely stay tuned to this. I'm going to be doing civilization specific balance changes for the top five and my two bonus right one is more of a global change to a unit and then the other honorable mention is actually going to be to the Romans who haven't hit the rank ladder yet so I'm going to keep them an honorable mention but I do want to talk about them for just a sec because outside of a build order video that you can check out on my channel and my build order uh, playlist well I haven't talked as much about the Romans because I've kind of been taking a wait and see approach even though I have been playing them quite a bit in the quick play ladder so anyways just keeping that in mind let's go ahead and jump into the video coming in at number five are the Chinese right Chinese even though they are going to get nerfed in the next patch right their cheaper technologies bonus is going to get slightly reduced this is still a civilization with three eco bonuses and an extremely open tech tree and it's that latter part of the civilization that I think still needs a little bit of work one of the issues with Chinese is that you just get a great economy and it feels like almost everything is on the table and pretty much everything you can make scales to a really high quality in the late game and in the late game that's where your technology is being cheaper is probably going to have the least effect on your economy now so keeping all that in mind i would argue that the chinese should lose access to the heavy camel rider i don't really think of the chinese as a camel civilization because you have such cheap technologies right it's kind of easy to transition between units and so it just feels like heavy camel rider is kind of thrown on top of this civilization but it gives this civ a pretty unique distinction of being one of the few that gets fully upgraded heavy camels and fully upgraded halberdiers but the difference here with the chinese is that well you're getting them at all of that at a pretty big discount and i just think that's too much losing access to heavy camel rider will force chinese players to think about how much they want to mass camels in the mid game to deal with opponents who are going to go knights and it will introduce something of a tactical deficiency that means that your anti-cavalry counter if that's what you want to make needs to be halberdiers or you want to think about another way to counter cavalry right maybe monks or something like that i just think that this would give the civilization a bit of a, a deficiency in their strategy and right now it just seems like their strategy doesn't exclude really anything and a strategy that isn't making choices and trade-offs really isn't much of a strategy coming in at number four we have the hindustanis and this is a sieve that has been nerfed to the core of the earth over the last few months now and i think that this has developed into a pathology where they're way too reliant on their camels right you do have other units right you have you know really good hand cannoneers but missing halberdier in the late game nerfs them uh in terms of the role they play in a unit composition plus hand cannoneers when they hit the field it's usually kind of mid-imperial anyways and they're very specialized similarly the gulam which are going to be buffed a little bit in the next patch are also a very specialized anti-archer unit but to me the big thing about the hindustanis is the fact that your heavy cavalry archers because you're missing parthian tactics don't have the durability that they need for the civilization and this is something in defiance of both actual history, but also the in-game history when the Hindustanis were formerly known as the Indians. The Indians were one of the better cavalry archer civilizations in the game because they had Parthian tactics in the technology tree. And if you go back and remember some tournaments like King of the Desert 4, cavalry archers was one of the most common unit compositions that you would see with the Hindustanis. And now their cav archers are basically the same as Spanish or Lithuanian. I mentioned Chinese earlier. Because you're getting so many technologies cheaper, Chinese cab archers are better than Hindustanis. And this just seems kind of messed up to me. So my suggestion, right, this is an either or. 
either restore Parthian tactics to the civilization or revise the unique text for one of the civilization bonuses to impact cavalry archers, right? What this would do in terms of implications is having more durable cavalry archers would give you a really solid late game composition and you would have another alternative to what we're, I think we're seeing, which is like the camel skirmisher kind of composition. And so now you would go from being a one dimensional sieve to a two dimensional one. Now, I think that restoring Parthian tactics to the civilization fixes it easy. But what if we decided to go another route with more of a Civ bonus or unique technology? I'd recommend it would be something to give them a little bit more durability. You could maybe think about reducing bonus damage they take from counter units. Um, that's something you might consider. Um, I think that taking that Civ bonus where hand cannoneers get plus one pierce armor and plus one melee armor, I would maybe just take that out and replace that with some kind of cavalry archer bonus just because i think that hindustani hand cannons where you really get your your meat on them right in terms of their effectiveness is once you research shatagni and get the extra two range um so you could give them some sort of durability cav archer bonus i don't exactly know what it would be again if it wasn't just parthian tactics but something along those lines i really think would do wonders for this civilization Coming in at number three, now we're going to have the Turks. Now the Turks have something of an identity that is built around durable gold units. This is one of the reasons why Sapahi gives the cavalry archers more HP and the gunpowder units you have also have more HP. Now this is really needed for the Turks because you have pretty limited options when it comes to trash units. Your skirmishers, you don't get the elite version, so that's not good. And you don't even get pikemen, so again, not very good there. Now you do get really good hussars that benefit from having plus one pierce armor. That was a change made about a year or so into the game. And I think you could up that change to also include Turk camels receiving plus one pierce armor. I think this would do a lot for the civilization. It would allow you to more comfortably uh, go camels when archers are out in the field. Um, you're still not going to have great pierce armor because you have the base zero, and you're still not going to have the DPS to thin out archers very quickly like a knight can. But it will give you a bit more durability from range units for your camels. It'll make them a little bit better rating in the late game, right? So I think this one was a small change that would really help out the Turks. Now, if you remember Hindustanis, back when they were the OG Indians, used to have this, and it was eventually removed. But you have to remember, part of the reason that it was removed was because the Hindustanis also have the Imperial Camel upgrade that's giving them even more HP. So I think that just because the Turks have sort of regular heavy Camel Riders, if you give them that plus one Pierce Armor, I think that that would balance itself out pretty nicely and not be too overpowered. So I think that's the one thing we can do to really complete the Turks. Coming in at number two on the list are the Dravidians. Now, I've got another either or for you. So thinking about the logic here, one of the problems with the Dravidians is that you just have an extremely limiting mid game in the latest tournament, King of the Desert Five. We've heard constantly about how uh, about how awful the Dravidians are from a number of casters and players. Though I still think the Dravidians might not be as bad as some people think, but the problem is that you just have some really severe limitations that can just make this sieve really hard to play with. And I think at the mid game, you're highly dependent on cheaper siege technology to try to offset this, right? Now, the problem is that that is highly variable. And this is really what I mean here, is that if you make a mangonel, right, which is still expensive even with the discount because you're spending a lot of gold and it's still a lot of wood, if you actually take out some units with it, right, then it might be worth the value. But if it gets, you know, one moment of Miss Micro and another Manganel takes it out and it doesn't do anything, that's a lot of resources down the drain. And the truth with Manganels is they tend to be home run hitter units, the kind of units that can really bring you back into a game. But they're also the kind of units that can, if they don't get any damage, are a real, uh, are a real bummer when it comes to resources. Now, Compare the Dravidians with the, with the Bengalis, another civilization that lacks both knights and camels, right? 
The Bengalis fixed this mid-game problem by going in the opposite direction, where to deal with enemy siege in the mid-game that might counter your elephant archer, something like that, you have extremely tanky monks that allow you to convert your opponent's mobile units like knights, right? You have all the, the melee armor and the pierce armor, and you can kind of steal other civilizations' units to get mobility. The Dravidians really don't have that. So I'm going to give you an either or here. I would argue that the Dravidians either should receive bloodlines or they should benefit from the faster attack rate with, that the elephant archers and the skirmishers benefit from. You could maybe even apply it to just mounted Dravidian units, right? That would also include the battle elephant. Or you can speci speci specify, excuse me, light cavalry directly, right? I think this would help something else up for the uh, Dravidians. Just basically the idea here is to buff their light cavalry because the Woot Steel technology also affects stable units, but your stable unit stats are so bad that I don't think it really gives you a lot of reason to actually go down that route. So if we went the Bloodlines route with the Civilization, what would it do? Well, it would address their mid game by giving you a little bit more durability. Though, remember, if you're trying to snipe Siege, it won't make them as good as Knights. It will not make their other mounted units overpowered because Elephant Archers already have, uh, you know, a lot of HP. 20 more is not going to matter. The same is true for Battle Elephants, which are still missing a lot of Blacksmith upgrades. But in the late game, your Light Cavalry will be a really competent melee fighter versus other Light Cavalry. Though, it will struggle as a raiding unit because you're missing Husbandry and the last armor upgrade. And so it's not going to be great versus Archers either. Basically, it would be like slower Japanese Light Cavalry that has a bit higher DPS, which I don't think sounds overpowered. Now, if we went the route of giving the civilization a faster attack rate, this would be a pretty big buff to your early game because, you know, you're going to have that for your scouts. Honestly, I wouldn't mind your feudal age having faster attacking scouts. Um, the Dravidians have something in their identity as kind of a civilization that consists of glass cannons, right? The Dravidian Elephant Archer is kind of a glass cannon in the mid game. The Urumi Swordsman is something of a glass cannon in the late game. I think that faster attacking scouts that in this setup actually lacked bloodlines, right? If we had it given the faster attack, that would give you something like a Feudal Age glass cannon. Now, I do think with that attack rate, right, you would probably need to start it in the uh, upon hitting Feudal Age, right? Because, you know, you don't want Dark Age scouts to be too overpowered. But, you know, you can modify these things. Um, maybe you could even unlock it behind researching forging or something else. I'm just saying, you know, you could you could mess around with it. But the idea, a faster attacking light cavalry unit would make it a bit easier to get the DPS to take out Siege in the mid game. And that's really what we're trying to solve. So that's the, uh, that's the Dravidians, uh, again, trying to fix their light cavalry. Now let me talk about a couple of honorable mentions here, and I want to start off actually talking about a unit, and I want to talk about monks, right? Monks conversion RNG right now is, I think, just a bit too randomized, and this has a major, major impact. Now, don't get me wrong, I like that there's some variability in conversions, but I think we're at a point where conversions for a lot of units start to feel a little arbitrary. Which takes us away from, say, strategic or technical uncertainty, and just gets us a bit too much into randomness. So I have two recommendations here, right? One recommendation is maybe thinking about a way to normalize the conversion times, so that they tend to concentrate around, say, a particular time it takes to convert a unit, right? So maybe some kind of a mean time for each unit, put that in a normal distribution somehow. Maybe you could play with the variance. Um, again, I don't want to get too mathy with this, but just something that would make the time of conversions a bit more predictable. But the biggest suggestion I have here is to get rid of the monk charging feature. Right now, if you're a monk and you're converting another unit and that unit goes out of your line of sight, right? You're not converting it anymore. And you start converting another unit, your monk is basically primed to make that conversion quickly for a unit that it has it just encountered. And what this basically means is that we're not punishing monks for failing to convert a unit. This is a feature in the game that I think is being exploited quite a bit, right? You, you know, hear people say like, you know, trying to convert buildings and stuff like that, and just kind of charging a conversion, right? To get that conversion juice up, 
So that way, when there's a unit they really do want to convert, boom, they get it really quickly. So I'd suggest, right, that we get rid of that feature and when a monk fails to convert, you have to start all over again. I know that when it comes to like microing units around, right, that could be a little tricky, but again, right, we're, I think we need to make sure that this doesn't get penalized just because, uh, or rather we need to make sure that monks are penalized for this, just because conversions send so much uh, resources towards the enemy and away from yours in that when you lose a knight to an opponent, remember they're gaining one. So it's like you're losing 60 food and 75 gold and your opponent's gaining it. Um, that's a pretty massive swing. So we need to do something, I think, with this charging feature because that's just having a really big impact on games. Now, our other honorable mention, and I already previewed this, are the Romans. Romans are coming to the rank ladder. I've been playing this a bit on the quick play feature. I actually think that they're really interesting and the changes that are going to be coming to the Romans, the vast majority of them are affecting the Roman water play, right? Your naval units. And I think that that really needed to be nerfed, right? But when it comes to land, I think the Civ's pretty interesting, but I think that they're missing a little something. What I would recommend with the Romans is to give their skirmishers an extra attack versus infantry. I would suggest giving them plus one attack versus infantry in each age, giving them a grand total of plus three, right? This would fit the Roman sort of historical fighting style where the Roman infantry typically did uh, employ throwing javelins at an opponent to soften them up. And it would also, because the Romans miss the bracer technology, right? Um, it would give your skirmishers just a bit more utility, right, to fight against other units. You're still not going to be the greatest against archers, because again, we're talking about attacking infantry here, but it would help you do things like, say, thin out the uh, mass pikes that your opponent might be making, and so that would give you a really interesting uh, knight skirmisher composition, because you'll thin out pikes a bit easier. Maybe you can even take down other opponents' heavy infantry a little bit easier, I just think it gives the Romans a pretty interesting trash unit. But remember, right, no bracer not only means less attack, but also means less range. So it's going to be a lot easier for opponents to close in on a Roman skirmisher as well. And I think with the Gambeson's technology in the game right now, skirmishers really, really struggle with infantry. It would be interesting to have a civ like the Romans that maybe they could still employ some skirmishers uh, versus uh, heavy infantry. It wouldn't be a great trade, but... It might be a, if you're, you know, you have mass skirmishers, it might be an interesting. And now coming up on the last civilization I'm going to have on the list is the Persians. Now, we got a preview uh, in the patch notes for the June preview that some big changes are coming to the Persians. And I think I've been talking about Persians for a while on this, and I will say that I don't think Persians are as terrible as people say, but, and I think that they're actually, honestly, in my opinion, they're underrated, but the Persians are a really strange civilization. A lot of times in Age of Empires, there is something of a balance that's achieved between civilization bonuses and the tech tree. So usually, if you're a civilization with a limited tech tree, you can have more civ bonuses. If you have more civ bonuses, right? Maybe you have a bit weaker tech tree and that's kind of what is usually in balance. So you see civilizations like the Chinese that have a pretty open tech tree and a lot of civ bonuses and they get really overpowered. Well, the Persians are like on the other end of the distribution, right? You only have about two bonuses. Now, I think that they're pretty good, right? Um, even their modest 50 food, 50 wood starting out at the, at the beginning of the game, I actually think overperforms uh, the, well, you know, what it looks like on paper. But you only have one other Sith bonus, and that is unlike pretty much any other civilization in the game. Your swordsman line, right, is probably some of the worst in the game in the Imperial Age. And because you like Bracer, your archers lack damage output. And I think especially with Gambesons now, commander and crossbows with the Persians are a really tough out where... I think even halberdiers to get all your armor upgrades, you typically just don't have the amount of trash bows that you need. But the real truth of it is that 
the Persians that we have in the game are way too much of an affront to history in that the Persian cavalry archers were some of the best in the world. I mean, take the technology Parthian tactics. I mean, it's in the name. Like, this is where, this is where we get it, right? So, the suggestion that I have for the Persians, and I actually think that this is coming to the game, just using my Jim Stradamus logic here, there's actually a twofer. I think that the Persians are going to get access to the Elephant Archer, because historically, Persians did use them. And that the Mahout's technology is going to change. I think that we're going to see the speed bonus get filled into the elite unit like we've seen with a lot of other elite units. Um, you know, Berserker Gang being folded into the elite Berserker upgrade being one example. That's a recent one. I think we're going to see Mahout's already just folded into the, the War Elephant or the, yeah, the Persian War Elephant and be changed to give their cavalry archers including the Elephant Archers, more attack. Now, this will do a number of things for the civilization. If we start off with the Cavalry Archers, well, you'd have a really unique identity for their CA. They would be tanky. They would have really good DPS, but they'd have limited range. This would give you a pretty good advantage, I think, against other Cavalry Archers, which, again, I think is fine given the historical importance of Cavalry Archers in the Persian military. But because of the less range, then when it comes to, say, Arbalist, which will have a two uh, range over you, you might see yourself getting thinned out, especially when it comes to skirmishers. They'll get more shots as you come to weigh in. Cavalry archers that can hit and run a bit more might be a problem. Versus melee units, you have to close a bit more, and so the lack of range is going to hurt you. It'll make you a little bit more vulnerable to siege, that kind of thing, etc. And so that would be the trick with Persian Cavalry Archers. Yes, right? Tanky, high damage, but it doesn't have the range. That would give us a really unique kind of Cavalry Archer to play with. I think the same things about the Cavalry Archers could apply to the Elephant Archer. Again, it'll be tanky, high damage, but low range. And something to keep in mind, right? is that the Bengalis and Dravidians have good mid-game bonuses for their Elephant Archers, and the Gujaras have like cost efficiency, more melee armor, faster production, that kind of thing. So I think that the Persian Elephant Archer would just be different enough from the current Elephant Archer sims we have in the game. The big thing this would do from a strategic perspective for the Persians is that you'd have an army composition that while it was still... Uh, primary mounted and that right now you're very reliant on melee cavalry but now you have a mounted unit that also has a range dimension and i think this compares to a lot of similar civilizations like the huns the berbers and the tatters and given those similarities right that you would see there then i don't think that this change in giving the persians good cavalry archers will all of a sudden make the sieve overpowered because your tech tree is already so limited and so that's it for the top five balance changes plus two bonus, right? Um, again, I think that uh, if I had to predict which one of these are going to come to the game, I really think it's the Persian one. Um, it just seems like an obvious one, both from a historical perspective and from a gameplay perspective. And I'm putting on my Jim Shadamas hat here. I think we are going to see Persian elephant archers and cavalry archers get some kind of balance change. But hey, as of after... All of this video, it ultimately just comes down to being my opinion. You can let me know in the comment section what you think. But with that being said, guys, I'm Jim James 59 and I'll see you out there in the ladder. Peace.